Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to look at a graph of a function of two variables and state some very quick things about how you can figure out information about the function and some things about whether it's a function based on the graph. Okay, so your function f of variables x and y, the graph is given by z equals f x comma y. So the x and y axis are the independent variable axis and the z axis is the what? So x and y are the independent variables and z is the dependent variable. dependent variable. Yeah. So z is the function variable. So if I give you this graph geometrically, how do you figure out the domain of f in terms of the graph? Hmm? You cast the shadow of the graph onto x, y plane. Okay. So you project the graph. That's the technical term. So for every point, you just consider the projection of that on the xy plane, and you do that for every point, so you get projection of the whole graph. That's reverse image. Well, this is a geometric operation we are doing. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the range of f in terms of the graph? What do you need to project the graph onto to get the range? Z axis. Yes. So, you can always go back and think of functions of one variable and how you do things there and then just carefully generalize to multiple variables. In this case, just two variables. So, it's functions of one variable. You project the graph on the x-axis and get the domain and you project the graph on the y-axis to get the range. Okay. So, now instead of projecting on the x-axis, you project on the xy plane. And instead of projecting on the y-axis, you project on the z-axis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about the vertical line test? The vertical line test for a function of one variable, it just said every line parallel to the y-axis intersects the graph at at most one point, and it intersects the graph if and only if that corresponds to something in the domain. Right? What would the corresponding statement be for a function of two variables? It's also a vertical test. Well, what do we mean by vertical now? Uh, a vertical line that's a vertical with what what is vertical plane. yeah so it's perpendicular to the x plane or mm -hmm. parallel to the z axis so every line parallel to the z axis intersects the graph at at most one point. Now what does a line parallel to the z-axis look like in terms of its equations? So you have to be a little careful as you hopefully know to describe a line in R3 how many equations do you need? So to describe a plane in R3, you need one equation. Uh -huh. To describe a line, you need two equations. Because it will be, it'll be obtained by intersecting two planes. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 this line parallel to the z-axis, you can give your two equations for such a line by specifying the x and the y coordinates. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it will be a line of the form. So this will have the form. Are we down here? Yeah. We're almost done. So, so what will the form be? It will be the form x equals x naught and y equals y naught. Remember, since it's parallel to the z-axis, it's like you're allowed to change the z-coordinate, but you have fixed the x and y-coordinates. Mm -hmm. Then that means you have to specify the values, and these will be your two equations. If you go back to functions of one variable, a line parallel to the y-axis, a line parallel to the y-axis is given by specifying a fixed value of the x-coordinate, mm -hmm. right? And so a line parallel to the z-axis in three dimensions will be given by specifying values of x and y coordinates. And so the intersection happens the intersection is non-empty if and only if this point x not y not is in the domain. Okay. 
So actually, the, the vertical line test says something slightly stronger. It says that if you have any any picture which has this property that every line parallel to the z-axis intersects that picture in at most one point, then that picture is the graph of some function. And you can reverse construct the function from the picture. Okay. Right? Okay.